to ask the host permission. Oh, good. Okay, great. Okay, well, welcome everybody um, to our Citizens for Global Solutions virtual book club. Today is October 8th, 2022, and I'm Bob Flax, the executive director. Uh, I'm joined by Gail Hughes, our book club coordinator. Um, and today is our third session of Reading Union Now by Clarence Streit. Um, so far, we've had Tiziana Stella, who is the executive director of the Strike Council, join us. We did expect her here today. She has not appeared as of yet, so we're trying to reach out to her. Um, but since um, a number of us have read the chapters, we can certainly proceed with the conversation. And if she joins us at any point, we can bring her in. Um, as usual, well, I guess, no, we're not, we, we, we may not be usual if she doesn't start. So uh, let me, I'll skip, uh, skip saying that. Um, and let's see, and I'll, uh, da, 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 and I okay, guess so we can forget about the mute part. I'm going down my checklist to make sure I don't forget anything. Um, so, um, so yes, yeah, so feel free um, if there's any comments you wanna make to use the chat um, during, the, uh, during the session. However, we will not be monitoring it. So folks can talk privately with someone or with each other, but um, we're not gonna be monitoring the chat. So just to know that. Um, we'll stop at about 10 minutes before the end of the session for any announcements um, that we have of any relevant uh, things that anybody wants to promote. So please hold that until the end. Um, and then if anyone joins us that we don't recognize, uh, we will stop what we're doing and check in with them uh, to make sure that they identify themselves uh, to prevent any Zoom bombing, hacking, or any other kinds of creatures that appear in cyberspace. So, um, so with that, um, I will open the floor because Tiziana has not shown up yet. And uh, we're doing chapters five and six, as I said, in Union Now. And I'll start then by calling for just sticking with chapter five at first. Um, if there are any uh, comments, questions, impressions, anything that leaped off the page at you um, in chapter five, well, well, then we'll chat about that. And then we'll move to chapter six, which was a, a much shorter chapter. Um, so if you would raise your hand in, um, in the, uh, you know, in the reactions feature. And, um, and if I don't see any, I, I'm happy to kick it off. So um, I'll do so, okay. So um, I, I had a question prepared to ask Tiziana, um, but since we're all experts here, I'll ask all of you. So, um, so here's my question. We've kind of talked about this a little bit uh, in the past, but the, you know, so chapter five argues for starting a world federation among the, the, the democracies. And at the time the book was written, there were 15 democracies that he pointed out uh, that Streit argued with the most advanced ones. He goes through all his statistics and stuff and explains why they're ideal, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and personally, it, it, it's a very convincing argument. You know, it, it seems to me that starting with democracies would be expedient initially. Uh, it would be easier. Um, it would just conceivably work better, okay? However, okay, my fear is that doing that today, the way the world exists today, um, would kind of solidify the new Cold War that appears to be starting. And we'd have, you know, the access, if you will, will be the United States and Europe, and a few other countries like Australia, you know, and Canada, whatever. And then the, the uh, I'm sorry, they say the allies would be them, and the access would be Russia and China, and the uh, countries that are in their sphere of influence. So my question that I was gonna ask Tiziana is what, you know, that conceivably might even slow down a world federation, you know, by crystallizing these two, these two new poles uh, into opponents, you know, that are now officially kind of, you know, lumped together. Uh, even more than NATO, let's say. And that might also make the world more dangerous. 
So I don't know. I mean, the, the, the Streit argument to me is, is very persuasive. Um, but what about the potential downside? Uh, so that's what I was going to ask Tiziana. Um, and let me just check first with Donna. Oh, here she is. Um, OK, well, I'll push the pause button um, on my question and give her a chance to um, uh, hook in. And then uh, I heard could... I did hear from Drea that Tiziana was having trouble logging, connecting. Oh, and Drea thought it could be her Internet issues. I oh. see she's still trying to connect to audio. You can see she hasn't okay. fully connected well, to audio yet. Got it. So while, while she's still struggling, then well, let me open the floor for any reactions to that. What, what, what do you think? I mean, on one hand, um, does the um, allying by the democracy seem to make more sense? And also does, is there a, the downside that I said? So Gail, I saw your hand first. Yeah, I had a similar question um, before that still stands really. And that is, there's an assumption that the democracies would create peace. You know, it would act like the Federation within the United States that there wouldn't be okay. war starting. But the democracies have launched wars against yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, let me others. just push the pause button to let Tiziana know what's going on. Um, so we, we, we weren't yeah, sure yeah. if you'd make it, so we started the conversation. Um, yeah. So, I'll, let, uh, so I'll, I'll ask, uh, I'll, I'll allow Gail to finish her thoughts, but then we'll switch over to you uh, for your presentation. Okay, so yeah. sorry, Gail, for interrupting, but please, by all means, finish. Right, so I see what you're saying too is a bit different what I was saying, but it, I also raised the question of effectiveness. I mean, there's an assumption that if the democracy is united, there wouldn't be war, but I just, I challenge that. Right, got it. Okay, and we'll, we'll channel that issue, that concern, as well as the one that I raised to Tiziana when she is done uh, with her presentation. So um, Tiziana, um, it, it, do you need any other further help with any technical stuff or are you ready to, to roll? Yeah, hold on a second so that I can get my thing to go. Uh, um, you can continue talking, yeah. You're, um, okay, do you need a few more minutes? No, I'm fine. I just need to uh, get to the beginning of my presentation. Okay. And have it available. All right. Um, okay. So, yeah, I heard the question. Shall we talk about that question now? Should we? Well, I, I raised one um, initially. I started the conversation by raising an issue, and then Gail added another issue. Um, so um, if you prefer, we could replay those two issues, or if you want to do your presentation first, uh, we can do that. Well, I think I may be like talking about the issues before so that uh, when I present the thing, it might be like a clarification a little bit of oh, great. what we're talking okay. about. Yeah. So I heard a little bit the concern about democracies waging war, and then I don't know if there was another question you said. Yeah. Well, well, since you heard what Gail said, why don't, why don't we start with that? And then I'll throw mine in, and then we can either go to your presentation or hear if that triggers more comments. Um, All right. So uh, that question was really the basic, one of the basic points for Stride. So how um, do you eliminate war among countries? And you do that by eliminating international anarchy. The idea that he had with the union at the time uh, was that if the union was powerful enough, uh, and that is why it was important to have this idea that the union had to have an, an overwhelming power. Then, uh, uh, and it's very clear in the book, he says that many times that there is a big difference between an alliance of democracies that doesn't really eliminate international anarchy and the union of democracies. And, uh, the assumption was that by having this overwhelming power, the union defense was just being so powerful that it would not really, the idea of, re, of going to war, it was not there anymore. It was, the idea was uh, precisely never 
uh, to put uh, to eliminate this this risk. So uh, here are several passages in Union now where it really makes a distinction between uh, um, the fact that democracies in an alliance uh, would still be compared to uh, wage war and democracies in a union instead were attacking the principle of, inter of international anarchy and uh, therefore were not being compelled. The last thing the strike wanted really was uh, uh, for the union to wage war. And this says that clearly uh, that the goal is not ever to replace uh, dictatorship uh, with democracy by waging war, but letting people outside of the union, uh, the idea to do that on their own and by changing the international environment and making the international environment not so competitive, uh, then that uh, would have created a space where democracy, in his opinion, could flourish um, naturally and uh, by the will of the people. And also the union would also have incentivated this process by uh, the promise in the constitution that he was very clear about that. The promise that if countries were to democratize and that uh, had to be like an endogenous process, it would not have been led by the democracies or pushed by the democracies and reached the minimum, a minimum bill of rights uh, and uh, also freedom of the press. These were the only two conditions. Then there will be um, uh, duty and uh, from the union to include these countries. So the idea that they could become part of the union as governing members and uh, having a voice in uh, uh, the union for him was a uh, strong incentive, but this incentive is also uh, to be um, strengthened by a constitutional commitment of doing so. Well, let, let me jump in to just let Claire, um, uh, Carla May know what we're doing because we changed formats. And then I'll check with Gail uh, to see if that answers her question. Then I'll throw in mine. Uh, so Carla May, welcome. Um, so um, Tiziana had some technical issues. So she joined us a few moments late. So we already were asking questions and having conversation. So Tiziana said, great, I'll jump into that and I'll respond to what I heard. And then I'll do my presentation. Uh, so that's what, what that's what you just came into the the middle of the movie instead of the beginning. Um, Thank you. Sure, sure. So um, so going looping back to you, Gail, um, did did that respond to what you were you know to your question or was there anything well, you wanted to clarify for? I, I understand that a union of the democracies would be more formidable, and other countries that wouldn't be part of it would be reluctant to attack. Uh, the organization as a whole or any members of it, but it is still, the thing is, it doesn't, just, it, it straight didn't realize because at the time that he wrote it, um, it was before all of these wars that were launched by the US around the world. And so democracies can and have attacked other countries. For example, the United States, launched um, a war in Libya that overthrew Gaddafi. And that wasn't because Libya was attacking the US or any other democracy. It was, you know, and, and also Iraq, um, weapons of mass destruction. But in other words, I'm not convinced that the democracies wouldn't attack other countries outside of that federation. In fact, it might make it more likely that they would attack because they would be stronger, you know, kind of a, um, um, a, a stronger NATO type of thing where, you know, NATO is um, used to, to threaten countries and, and attack countries. You know, some, sometimes people would think it's justifiable or not, but I don't think it's always been justifiable. So in any anyway, I, I'm not yeah, sure maybe like, you know, because we of the go time to you the wrote. Presentations like the, it will clarify a little bit, and then we can come back after the presentation to to this. Um, and yes, uh, the solution that Stry was proposing was an interim solution and was the final solution until you know the final goal of World Federation. All these things is still uh, you know happen 
we're not. Yeah, Tiziana, if you could speak a little louder. Some ah, yes, yeah. uh, I was saying that maybe we can come back to that after the presentation, if after the presentation is still unclear, what was his idea? And one other thing also was that Strait who was presenting the idea of a union of democracies like as not the end goal, but a beginning, a way to change, to alter the system of international anarchy, which was the main cause of war. And so the, until the day that there is there was war federation, that could still happen. However, in his idea, it would have been less likely because the uh, partly the idea of uh, uh, states competing with each other would have uh, diminished. And so it was not like, a, he never presented that as the final solution. He's always presented that as a step toward the final solution that would solve the problem of starting world government, which to him was the most important thing. If we never start, we never get there. So how do we start on the, on the most possible sound basis? And uh, his idea was this union of democracies, open nucleus of democracies, and rather than waiting forever and never getting there, which is always the discussion of is the most desirable solution, but it's impossible because why? There are many reasons why, because there is not a world community, a world society that will support this, therefore you cannot you know, impose it from above. Um, so that's why also, why is focusing on certain traits in the union, and I was like, he's a wager. Can we do it by doing that as opposed to doing the other ways? And that was his plan that maybe by doing that, we can get there, uh, how to move from here to there. So it was like an interim phase, but so conceived so that it would alter the logic of power internationally. So anyway, we can get back to that and uh, I'm not here defending or saying that he was right. I'm just trying to explain his logic and why he, uh, he got to that point of deciding to do that. Great, thank you. So in addition to revisiting that, I think it'd be best if we put my question uh, to the end also and let you, you proceed with your presentation. Okay, all right. So um, let me... Um, All right, now. <sighs> Hold on a second, I'm, st I'm still not perfect at this. Okay, share screen. Uh, share. And then we go back to this. That's great. I, I also talk to myself when I push all the buttons, it keeps me focused. So <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> it's good. Uh, okay, here, from beginning. Uh, here I am. Uh, you have it? Yes, thank you. All right, uh, so now I'm gonna minimize this. All right, so uh, the two chapters that we uh, read, uh, are probably some of the most, probably the most important chapters in Union now because they really uh, explain uh, not the theory only, but uh, it was as a programmatic manifesto and uh, also a plan of how to go, how to create World Federation. And one of the reasons I think why Stride uh, and uh, Union now became uh, so popular uh, at the beginning of World War II, it was that it was really the only plan that was specific enough to uh, provide an alternative scenario for the post-war. So Union Now became really powerful uh, in the years 1939, 1940, 1941-1941. Created the beginning of discussion on world organization uh, at the beginning of the war. Uh, there was nothing else 
actually there because the Roosevelt administration had no focus on that aspect and it didn't focus on the concept of world organization until later, 19, after 1941, 42, 43, then after the war started. In fact, at the time of the Atlantic Charter, uh, Roosevelt was uh, not interested in the concept of world organization when it was brought up by Churchill. So there was this vacuum uh, and this lack of ideas and tried that instead of plan that was specific that uh, it also provided the steps out to move from one system to another system. And so it really created uh, this a big debate within American society, but also uh, in, in the world. And um, it set a lot of the parameter for the discussion of world organization. Uh, and then it was discarded when the official plans came into place um, and, uh, it, and it, did not, it was not embraced. But anyway, so these two chapters are very important because it was really trying to show people, well, we can get to federation, we have to get to federation, but how do we go there? So he was a journalist at the League, and uh, so was part of all the discussion on how to reform the league. Uh, at a certain point, there was this uh, wide consensus uh, that uh, the league had to be reformed and some delegation of national sovereignty was needed. This was not a concept that uh, most people disagreed with. Uh, the idea was how to do that and uh, by which means and by what path uh, could um, this altering the structure of the league uh, happen. So stride, uh, the, this idea was that uh, the way to move from league to federation is by doing what is enough now to remove international anarchy so that by altering uh, the system, the war system and how um, anarchy uh, impacts the war system and relations among nations, uh, it was possible to start the movement toward the uh, federation. So we're gonna go uh, into why he thought he had to be made by democracies and why the nucleus had to add over overwhelming power in his logic. Um, his idea was that the most difficult step was agreeing on starting, starting to create this different way of organizing states and interstate government. And um, he came to the conclusion that uh, by doing less, it could be more could be achieved, that even if universality was the goal, the problem was the main problem that countries were facing was they were failing to start. So uh, here I have just included this uh, just as a reminder of why having failed to alter uh, the system of uh, international anarchy uh, brought us to some of the existential risks that we are facing today. And uh, you see here, for example, that one of the uh, elements in uh, how existential risks could really bring to the system collapse is local conflict, international local conflict that really play into how this complex system in which we are today uh, could move uh, beyond the point in which uh, the system could survive and it could be system collapse. So uh, the basic idea was at the time uh, removing international anarchy as the cause of war and uh, without that step, no other cascading effect would happen. So it was a moment, uh, um, it was already in World War I, but also in, in World War II even more. There's a sort of anti-literal reflect, anti reflection on uh, how um, 
the world and the problems of the world should be seen and interpreted as a complex system. We're failing to remove the cause of war was the beginning step to prevent further uh, risks. Uh, and then of course with the nuclear bomb, this became much more complicated. So here I have this, uh, I was looking at this yesterday and um, it was created, uh, you know, June, 2022. So, and I think it's a very interesting uh, way to look at what's happening today. So it moves across time and it starts from the pandemic and the war in you know, Russia and Ukraine. As federalists, we uh, would understand that um, the pandemic could have been managed in a much better way if we had you know, a world federation, a world government, and the, co and the war between Russia and Ukraine would have not been uh, in place. How failing to create a different system, international system, is now creating this global poly crisis where, as is shown here, problems become uh, degenerate, cascade, and uh, in June 2022, the problem was uh, climate change and uh, possibility of a uh, uh, nuclear war. Now we also have uh, the possibility of uh, a global meltdown of the, um, of the economy. And so um, I think that thinking about why it was important at the time in World War II to change the system and how failing to change that system by creating a different way of organizing uh, human society is really led to a much bigger risk and the risk of survival that uh, of you of the human of human and the planet. So why Stray thought uh, that uh, a nuclear democracy could be important to move beyond? Uh, the idea that creating a world government, which was uh, widely agreed upon uh, as a solution at the time, uh, was impossible. So first of all, in the interwar period, the idea of how to reform the league uh, was explored in many ways after the collapse of the hope that there could be this organic development, this incremental evolution from league to federation. When Wilson created the League of Nations, what he thought and what many other internationalist groups thought was that by setting the league, it, eventually there would be a, the possibility of an incremental evolution to World Federation. And the idea was that the League would have helped maintain peace and therefore democracy would have spread at the national level. Um, and after that, countries could have created the United into a federation. But this did not happen. So Stride, one of the idea that Stride had that was original to his thinking was that we had to invert the uh, steps. At first, we have to consolidate power on the side of democracy to remove anarchy, sufficient power so that anarchy could be removed. Democracies had sufficient power to do so because we calculated uh, in the chapter five, there are all the calculations why democracy that there's a superior power, but by failing to unite, this power was creating, uh, was with, with one of the main causes of uh, um, chaos in the international order. 
and uh, reasons to um, for reason for competition and work. So for Stride, the goal was always world government. Um, the idea that uh, it was necessary to supplant international anarchy, power politics, because without doing so, democracies could not survive. For Stride, the end goal of this process was, an, was world federation and world government, uh, but the reason why to him was so important, it was because the most important value in his, um, where in his conception was a system that would guarantee the equality of all individuals. Therefore, a sort of a world democracy, uh, but organized in a, a federal way. So all the paths though that were explored at the time in the interwar seemed at that end. There were different solutions on how to get there uh, and start analyze why these were based on wrong, wrong assumptions. Some people understood that it what was needed was a systemic change. Uh, in fact, there was consensus on that among a lot of the people that have been working at the League and the a lot of internationalist groups that, that already had been organized in World War I. So the idea of replacing the League with War Federation, but the dilemma, as I was saying earlier on, was uh, although it was a desirable and uh, it was not feasible. So this impasse always created further procrastination and uh, the procrastination uh, led to not being able to escape power politics. And so this uh, alternative between the Federation and the League uh, would always uh, return when people were thinking about how to organize world government. In fact, in World War II within the State Department, uh, the idea of creating a federation was explored, uh, but it was all, always conceptualized as an alternative uh, to the League. And the League was what was feasible. A world federation was impossible. And so that was, again, discarded also in World War II. So then there were other models of restricted membership. Uh, we spoke about those uh, in the previous uh, lectures that we had. But so they were having, in, instead of having universal organization of uh, countries, it could be an organization of the great powers or an organization of people speaking uh, the same language or an organizations of uh, um, regional organizations. But Stride uh, saw that the criteria that those organizations were um, based upon would preclude the growth into universality. So the goal had to be universality. And um, other solutions were restricting membership to democracies without systemic change. Uh, so creating an alliance, a league of democracies, but Stride argued that that would not remove anarchy and therefore would not be a starter. So to solve the problem of world government, Stride uh, thought that it was important to get to enough to move past the deadlock of feasible versus desirable with an open nucleus of democracies. If the World Federation was the goal, it did not need to be the first step. If world government would remain forever unfeasible, it could never start or start on the wrong foundations, then uh, the whole process of trying to reform the League to World Federation would never have uh, occurred, could never occur. So what was important was starting and get to enough to set in motion a different path dependency to World War Federation. And uh, 
an open nucleus of democracies if organized in a certain way and with certain traits in stride um, plan could do that. So he um, thought and um, about the situation and they, and they proposed this nucleus method that combined the benefit of the restricted method, which was visibility, but also made the goal of universality possible and desired. So it had to start restricted to democracies. Only a union through federation can replace anarchy by making the individual and not the state the unit of government, also in the government of interstate relation. So in this view, there will be an interim period of coexistence of universal work operation with partial world federation, the nucleus. What to him was important is that if the nucleus had uh, uh, this overwhelming power, uh, and if the nucleus was organized on the principle of federation and uh, based on the principle of equality of the individuals and that the individual as the unit of government, because this would alter uh, power in the global system and the dynamics of power in the world, in the global system, it was possible slowly to enlarge this union and to extend also to the area that originally was out of the nucleus, uh, the principle of uh, government based uh, on the unit of the individual. So the trace of the union was, uh, first of all, yeah, to create a critical mass to act as a singularity. Uh, create a path dependency to world, world government, to replace the path dependency uh, that uh, international anarchy instead had always set in place and uh, leading to war. It had to organ be organized as an open democratic federal union nucleus so with sufficient power to supplant anarchy. Uh, and this core would gradually alter the global dynamics of power in favor of democracy. So he thought of it as this kind of political singularity that able to cause a rupture with power politics, which was the precondition for the survival of democracy. So the precondition to the possibility of creating a world federation. Without the survival of democracy, world federation will never occur. Um, and uh, the precondition also for so that it could also grow into a, um, a universal world democratic federation. So the, this, un, this nucleus had to be federal, had to be democratic and open. And uh, because of the depth of union, because it, it was asking countries to unite in federation, it had also to have sufficient homogeneity uh, to make it feasible. Um, but also, it was very clear that although countries that were uniting had to be homogeneous enough to find in sort of the societal uh, support for the creation of this kind of integration, uh, it also had to be not exclusive. This is why I made sure that he, uh, there were different countries, there were small and big nations, um, and uh, it was not based on a criteria that uh, was exclusive in any possible way. Uh, and then we come to the idea of imbalance of power. Uh, the importance of the imbalance of power for Stride was that because it did not want the union to um, be in a situation of competition, of, of with uh, in the war, this imbalance of power could yield deterrence and disarmament uh, and at a lower cost. The idea was that the union defense had to rely only on deterrence alone 
And here is the statement that maybe a, a little bit answers what Ria was asking. So that unlike armament and alliance policies, union leads to no crusade against autocracy abroad, to no attempt to end war by war or make the world state for democracy by conquering foreign dictatorships. And uh, this imbalance of power uh, was qualitatively different from the preponderance of power of classical hegemony because it was based on this internal sharing of power and the promise of inclusiveness in the government of the union, which for stride was critical that had to be one of the clauses of the constitution of this initial nucleus of democracies. Uh, it, it was also a way to move beyond collective security that uh, Lothian uh, described not as a peace system, but a system of using war as the instrument of collective policy. So the trace of the union is add that to spark this chain reaction that could permanently alter the global dynamics of power in favor of democracy and peace. It could alter anarchy. So consolidating the power of democracies and altering the nature of their power through federation was the priority. And the reason here was that uh, democracies, as you said, had the superior power, but by not being organized into a union, their competitiveness was one of the main causes of uh, uh, international instability. If this core of democracies would alter their own anarchy, that would have greatly helped uh, set the world in a less competitive and uh, environment and therefore allow uh, and facilitate the movement toward uh, World Federation. So it was possible to eliminate global anarchy by federating just 15 or 20 democracies. Uh, and this would cause a sufficient rupture with the old balance of power system to break uh, through the feasibility, desirability deadlock. So the nucleus to be small enough to start right away. This was his idea. The idea is let's start with the smallest possible nucleus uh, group of countries that by uniting in a federation could at the same time altering the global system because they could also alter international anarchy. The democracies can, un and, and the other idea was that uh, the democracies could unite without doing violence to anyone or to any democratic principle, and by doing so, removing international anarchy. And this, I think, is one concept that today um, is sort of relevant because uh, this is one of the advantages that democracies have uh, compared to autocracy, that they can unite without, you know, uh, doing violence of any democratic principle without breaking any democratic principle. It is in, in their, it's their choice to unite in a different way. And uh, by doing so, uh, setting, altering part, at least part of international uh, anarchy. And by doing so, also acquiring more power uh, to protect democracy in a way that uh, is very different from the system of alliance that we have today. Uh, so this, I think that uh, although we do not have today as in, at the day, as in the time of strike, this preponderance of power, uh, that things are different, that other countries uh, have become uh, strong and there is a, more of a multipolar system in place, nobody can really prevent democracies for, from organizing in a different way. And in this, I think the idea that bringing the United States, which is a big chunk of war power in a union of democracies uh, would really alter greatly uh, balance of power. The idea of international anarchy would not be sufficient as at the time, but it would uh, really make the beginning of a different um, process. So, um, he also thought that changes in the core 
the nucleus where balance of power was replaced by sharing of power would affect the global system and make World Federation a gradually achievable goal. For Stride, the creation of this initial union was important because to him was important the survival of democracy and the survival of democracy depended upon this breakthrough. Uh, by uniting in federation, these democracies would prevent a relapse into the systemic competition between democracy and the autocracy that inevitably will resurge in moment of crisis in an anarchic world. And the idea was the, uh, the nucleus had to be cohesive, but not exclusive. Uh, its constitution had to make explicitly clear that it is meant to grow peacefully into universal world government. All right. Um, now I need to hold on. Um, Anthesiana, while so, you're changing your slides, just to let you know, we've got about 40 minutes left. How many? 40, four zero. 40? Yes, okay. four so zero, 40 I, uh, so for I'll the presentation and questions. All right, all right, all right. So I'm almost done anyway. Sure. So how to move from... The idea of the nucleus was also important because uh, it was in important, he spoke about this idea of the unit of government and that international organization and uh, based on uh, uh, the unit of the state would always uh, try leaning toward uh, uh, protecting the survival of the state. And uh, if based on the unit of the individual would always try and eventually to protect uh, the, the individual. So how to move from one unit of government in the world interstate government to another? The nuclear strategy. <clears throat> so the pivot of this change was making the individual the unit of government in the core of world organization, and then organize this core as an open democratic federal nucleus. The core would gradually alter the larger structure and as countries became democracies, the individual would progressively replace the state as the unit of government throughout and world federation would become the form of world organization. I had this slide uh, the previous time, I wanted to go over again because um, it explains how uh, the two basic element in uh, stride conceptualization of the nucleus, the idea that democracy was uh, crucial and that also universality was crucial. Um, and how he saw that a league that was universal and that was based on the equal sovereignty of states, which was then, uh, uh, which is still, what is at the basis of international organization with the, with the UN based on the equal sovereignty of states, uh, could uh, move toward a union uh, that would be based instead on the equality on the individuals. And so uh, here we see like at the core of the system, there is the individual, there is uh, the nucleus of democracies as uh, the the center of the um, world organization that he envisioned and in the outer skirt there is intergovernmental world organization. However, by making the individual, the unit of government uh, at, at the core, at, in the nucleus, in the open nucleus of democracies, and by this nucleus being sufficiently strong, uh, it was, his ties wager was that eventually the individual could move to be the core of the larger universal world organization uh, because this nucleus would also 
uh, diminish the possibility of war, diminish international competition and chaos, and therefore uh, make it easier for other countries uh, to become democracies just because there would be a, a less uh, competitive international environment. Another important thing that Stride uh, underlined was that the nucleus was not to supplant, but to reinforce the league and to strengthen democracy. And similarly today, it would not be to supplant the United Nations, but to reinforce the United Nations by having a core that was stable enough and strong enough um, and uh, also strengthen democracy because an international environment that is competitive would always be uh, against survival of uh, the stability of democracy as we see today. So for Stride, the, the idea was not that league and union were an either or choice, which was the usual assumption because the only two ways to organize go inter interstate government was either by league or by union. Uh, but it was possible to organize a universal league uh, with an internal federation, a universal league based on the equal sovereignty of states and a union at the center based on equality of the individual. So it was a not only, but also. The alternative was not the static idea of either a league or federation, but a, the, a league with a federation that could grow into the same, uh, into a world organization. So the most urgent problem for site was world government. Uh, and uh, the nucleus uh, can could change and remove now the major cause that was preventing movement toward world government, anarchy, and uh, allow disarmament, and therefore uh, internal disarmament for sure, but also he thought uh, also global disarmament because they would, they, by diminishing uh, and by having internal disarmament, this uh, forever competition for uh, more armaments would also uh, be tamed. And uh, it had to be done now. This we went through the other time, I was just trying, and I think just a couple of words about that. Um, his idea was that democracy and not just to be the members, but also democracy had to be a criteria for the method of union, that democracy had to unite in a democratic way that is through federation. And that by doing so, it was possible both to uh, save democracy uh, and also to allow the coming of uh, World Federation. Um, I think I'm done. Uh, and uh, so we can have a discussion on these things. OK, perfect. So we have a little bit, uh, well, actually, a little less than half an hour with the time for announcements. So I'd like to loop back to the discussion we started at the beginning of the session and first check in with Gail to see if, if the presentation which addressed parts of her question uh, did indeed answer it. Uh, then I'll restate my question, which everybody else heard, um, and then take anybody else in the queue. So Gail, anything you wanted to add or clarify? And you're on mute, Gail. Okay, unmute, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that the time straight wrote the book, you know, that was part of the problem and that he, he wasn't in a position to answer my question really. So yeah, I understand about, you know, the overwhelming force and, you know, but that's just a lingering question that I'll, ha I'll have. I don't, I can't think of anything else. Okay, thank you. And, and uh, Tiziana, is there anything that you wanted to add to what, um, you know, what was discussed earlier. To what? Um, before you and Gail at, at the beginning were, were talking uh, about yeah. her issue, was there anything else that you wanted to add to that? And then I'll go on to, 
to my question and then any new questions. Um, I, I mean, I, what I think, I think the study was looking for a strategy of moving, you know, a start in this world government and uh, a strategy that was sound enough to have this on the, on the right foundation. The right foundation was that interstate government had to be based on the individual in order to preserve democracy and in order to allow world federation. His concern was this sense of urgency that we are feeling today also with, you know, with climate change and the nuclear threats and uh, uh, the global financial meltdown. And so the importance was to start and uh, it was a wager, but he also was trying to create a system where it was the least likely that war would occur and that the system were, that was least likely could not be already universal, but he thought that if the union is universal, it is uh, overwhelming, its power is overwhelming, that would not, uh, that would not have, um, continued this system of uh, uh, power politics. It was a way to uh, diminish uh, the chances of uh, um, that international anarchy could create war because of the way that it conceptualized. But it was not uh, a perfect system and he understood that. Uh, as we know that once we get to World Federation, it will not be a perfect system. There will be still lots of problems that we'll have to solve, but we could focus actually on positive pieces, of course, to competition and other problems. So uh, it's not, none of these are panacea, but it, it, he thought of it as a way to move to World Federation and make it possible. Um, Great, yeah. thank you. Okay, so um, I'll ask the question I, I started with earlier, and then anybody else, please raise your hand if you want to get in the queue. Um, so yeah, so my, um, yeah, if you could raise your cyber hand, then it puts you in the order and, and all that stuff, and you get to there by bringing your cursor down to the bottom. Uh, there'll be a part that says reactions, click on that, and then uh, click on raise hand. Okay, so my question was, um, that uh, again, Streit's writing is, is very persuasive to me at least and very compelling. Uh, and it does seem that initially um, that using, you know, using his strategy of unifying the democracies uh, is a way to, to, to work. But I was wondering, my fear is that given the world today, um, would doing that kind of solidify a new Cold War? Um, whereas, you know, the United States, Europe, and some other countries are like the new allies, or the, they're still the old allies, but the new ones as well, and Russia, China, and the, the, the countries in their sphere of influence will be the new access. Um, so would that actually slow down the process of creating a world federation by crystallizing these opposing superpowers and perhaps make the world even more dangerous? Um, so there's no way to know that for sure, but I'm just wondering if uh, what your thought is about that. Uh, yeah, so my thought is that there was a great window of opportunity, window of opportunity in World War II, when actually democracies had this uh, overwhelming power and now they don't have that. that I mean, that, that, I think that that window of opportunity is sort of passed, uh, but um, that does not change uh, one of the basic points, I think it doesn't change one of the basic points that by not uniting uh, democracies are in a way um, creating and maintaining a less uh, international, uh, a less stable international order. They are also uh, making, um, you know, they, they also come, come across uh, a little bit hypocritical uh, in uh, when when we talk, you know, about the um, the rule based international order and uh, why we should support this order that is based on the idea of sovereignty of nations. That is the main thing that, that should be uh, defended: the sovereignty of nations, the integrity of nations, and all that. So uh, by altering their relations, at least they could alter, uh, at least partially 
uh, this idea that at the basis of the international order, uh, the sovereignty of nations is the basic building blocks that cannot be touched and so on. Um, what I also think is that uh, it would give uh, an incentive uh, um, for other countries, if you if you were built in the way that Stride uh, thought about it, uh, you know, to join and uh, to become part of this union that um, you know would provide better protection. Uh, right now, the idea of uh, you know joining NATO is uh, what joining a military alliance to what to in order to compete with other countries, and there isn't really a logic of changing. Uh, the system, the international system, the idea of the international system based on nation states. So um, I think that it could uh, spark uh, uh, some change in the right direction. It would not be definitely sufficient in terms of being like, start again another Cold War. Uh, possibly, I don't see how it would start more than uh, uh, the present situation. I think it was, decrease uh, the chances of moving toward a new Cold War that this situation is really uh, moving toward. Um, uh, it would be less likely. So uh, it will also, I think, uh, uh, above all, if conceptualizing the way the strike thought that the constitution had to include this clause of uh, Align countries that had this minimum bill of rights and free press. To him, was very, very important the issue of the free press. That democratization was not uh, through modernization and development, but through freedom of the press. Um, if, uh, I think it would, uh, for example, in the case of Russia, offer an alternative. Uh, which presently is not there. Uh, if Russia, if you know, democratic forces in Russia knew that at the end, at the other end of the tunnel, there was a participation in a union, I would strongly motivate them. If at the end of the tunnel there is nothing, uh, then there isn't really hope. It, it would not. It doesn't spark enough hope. Um, the other point that I think is important is we know about, uh, you know, there is this idea of the summit for democracy, but the idea of the summit for democracy, uh, all that it does is hoping that there would be more national democracies. And the national democracies have not uh, changed uh, as we've seen, even if when they were the majority and now there is this uh, going back to more autocracy, change the war system uh, in a way that would eliminate anarchy, it would just be anarchy by means of, of democracies and the hope that because there's a democratic system that will not go to war against each other and they will not go to war against other countries, which is not the case. So, um, Instead, by uniting democracies, uh, it, this this logic would, you know, um, change. So I I think that these points um, are worth considering, and but especially, you know, the point of uh, uh, having access to this union where democracy is more. Um, guaranteed and uh, human rights uh, and uh, other rights of, for the individual and possibility uh, of emancipation and different life is, uh, is important, which we do not have now. Thank you. Um, we have a little less than 20 minutes left. I see both Carla May and David in line. So go ahead, Carla. Isiana, thank you. Um, I would like to address uh, Gail's question once again, just by saying that both Iraq and, um, you know, the, the Gaddafi fiasco were United States attacking those countries. If the United States was part of a nucleus, they could probably never have done that. They would have had to check with their, with their compatriots 
And if their goal is peace, it would seem the direction would have been to a diplomatic conference. But that did not exist. And so we acted on our own. If this nucleus would exist, it would seem that the solution to the Ukrainian fiasco is to immediately admit Ukraine into the NATO, into the union that is tentatively formed by the Euro Union United States. At which point, war would have to cease. No Ukrainian violence could continue, or Russia would bring the entire NATO upon its head. And this includes nuclear threat that if, if the Ukraine was a part of that nucleus, tentatively, however tentatively, Russia would have to stop because the power play that you've described would be in place. Power is not bad, it reveals. And the power that Russia is revealing is hideous. It is totally, total autocracy. If this bond of NATO that doesn't already exist does not get some teeth in it, this is going to go on infinitum and we are all going to suffer and possibly be endangered. The entire globe would be endangered by any nuclear threat. Right. Thank you. Um, although not a question, I, would you like to respond? Uh, yeah, I just, I just want to add a couple of things. One other thought that's tried to add, um, and I, don't, I think it's somewhere in some other chapters of Union now, he reflected upon uh, uh, what will happen if um, this was like in, uh, after the end of World War II, what will happen if uh, there will be these re revolutions in the East and uh, without the West, or the democracies having been united first. It's said uh, that, would create, bring back the same situation that there was before World War II, uh, a system where there would be, it would increase the, the possibility of war because his idea was if there were a union at that point, it was possible, it would have been possible to bring these countries within the union. And so create, um, less international anarchy, diminish uh, the possibility of war. By not being united, uh, it was impossible. It, it's easier to bring countries into a union that is deeply united because there is this deeper level of, of unity. Uh, and so it's one of his consideration was it was important for this union to occur before the end of the Cold War so that uh, it would not lead to further international anarchy and uh, with the idea that there, is, there are nuclear weapons now, which is what actually happened. And so I think that one of the moments like at, at the end of uh, the Cold War in, at, in the early nineties, we really did not have a strategy on how to take advantage of that moment. Uh, and the strategy would have been first to change you know, our relations among democracies and uh, then allow these countries to be part of the union um, by having been, been left out there. Uh, the only thing that is left to do is to compete with the rest. Um, there isn't an alternative at the end of the tunnel when uh, there is a revolution, but then there is no possibility to join. There is just a possibility to survive. And if you're, if you're strong enough countries, then uh, to compete. Okay, thank you. Uh, David. Um, I'm sorry that um, Gail and Ron Glossop are no longer on the call because some of the things that I wanna mention uh, respond to them. Uh, first to Gail's point, uh, there is a considerable amount of empirical evidence that stable democracies don't go to war against other stable democracies. It is, is democracies that go to war against non-democracies. And so uh, I think Street and others are correct in saying that if more and more countries are democratized, that would make for a more peaceful world. But 
Um, I agree with Ron Glossop's argument against Stride in his book on World Federation, which is uh, the point that Bob brought up. If the democratic countries unionize, what's going to stop the non-democratic countries from having a counter union? And then uh, the possibility of a future world government, I think, could be uh, put off. Um, the same problem exists with uh, uniting regions. Then you would have competition between different regional federations. And as Citizens for Global Solutions, I think we have to figure out a way in which to get to a world federation, what would be the best and fastest way to do that in light of our current problems, especially climate change. You know, when Stride was writing, there were only about 51 countries in the world. And uh, most of the world since then has been decolonized. So now there are about 193 countries. And uh, I think the question for us then is, what's the best way to unite all the countries of the world? Well, we've already begun with the United Nations. Uh, Stride and Glossop and others are right that the problem with the United Nations is that it's a confederation or league instead of a federation. But I think a much faster way to transform the United Nations into a world federation is what Joe Schwartzberg has been talking about with his plan for weighted voting. So we already have the United Nations where all the countries of the world are united together in, under a league. It's not a matter of having divisions between democratic and non-democratic or region versus region. But I think if uh, I, I would uh, be in favor more of Schwartzberg's plan than Streit's plan, because all you need to do is amend the UN um, articles uh, so that there could be weighted voting so that world law could be created and then enforced. Um, so I, I would vote for Schwartzberg's plan over Streit's plan. Thank you, David. Any response, Tiziana? Uh, I think that's definitely another way to go. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't particularly see that um, democracies continue to be disunited. Would in any way uh, make uh, the cause of World Federation uh, any easier. One idea is this, for example, looking at Indian democracy. So by being, but by, by being, by having this logic of uh, not altering their own relations, in the case of Indian democracies now, uh, is, is in a terrible situation. And one of the re reasons is because it also has to compete uh, with, with other countries uh, and therefore making the state more powerful. By making the state more powerful, it means to have less democracy within the country, which now is a really serious situation. So I think that some of the reasons why we see a growth of autocracies in the world um, it's also because there is less stable international system um, and uh, the idea that if there were a core within the UN that was united and working together within the UN made of democracies uh, playing by the rules of the UN, um, I don't know, maybe the two methods could be combined, maybe your method and the method of strike could be combined, but at least there will be at least a beginning of order. Like in the case of the European Union, there is a beginning of order that is based on a union of democracies that is quasi-federal. And now there are a lot of new proposals that came out that, well, we need actually to move toward a, a federal organization of, of Europe. Also because the what we are asking to world citizens, uh, to people in the world, is to make in huge sacrifices now to deal with uh, existential risks. There are going to be huge changes. And without having the participation of uh, a democratic participation, uh, debate, ability to participate in these big choices, 
I think a lot of individuals and, country, and, and people feel disenfranchised and they, they feel that, why should they, what's in it for me? Uh, and you see like, for example, in the case of Italy, you see this change toward a more illiberal system of government because um, of, of this. So in my, in my opinion is that I think the two things could go together. I don't see why it couldn't be done that way. And I don't think that um, having something bigger than the European Union based on the same principles would in any way, uh, you know, be a detriment toward uh, the, the movement toward a different world, different system. Uh, but Great. Good, thank you. Yeah, I saw Simon's hand up uh, earlier and then I'll take uh, Donna and then me unless someone hasn't gone, you know, first, then I'll go before me. But go ahead, Simon. We've got about 10 minutes left. Um, very rich discussion. Thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Stella, and uh, everyone contributing. One of the problems that we all see in preventing World Union, World Federation, is that of democracies and sovereign states now, the weakness of a sovereign state uh, forming a democracy, as we all know, is that sovereign states feel independent from other sovereign states. And therefore, a bigger sovereign state could easily decide to invade the next door, uh, uh, smaller uh, sovereign state and uh, occupy it like uh, Putin is trying to do with Ukraine. Uh, why? Because there is a lack of supranational law. Supranational law is missing in all these discussions. The only thing that we alluded to, Ms. Stella, of the supranational laws was the European Union. The European Union success is based on supranational laws. Unless we have supranational laws to prevent sovereign states from doing what they want to do, uh, uh, often uh, not the right thing to do, but the wrong thing to do, often not the good thing to do, but the bad thing to do then we can't unite in any way. So the first step. Simon, I will ask you to get to your question. We have only a few minutes left and some people in line. Don't you think then the question is that we need uh, supranational laws to which all countries obey and not obey their national laws in order to get a union and a federation? Yeah, Thank you. Yes, and that was part of the, the idea was to try to have this supranational law, but how do you enforce this law uh, if, again, you have to have a, a create federation or a beginning of a federation? His idea was let's try at least the beginning where we, there can't be this supranational law that is based though on the idea of the unit of government as the individual. Uh, and supranational law without uh, a democratic base would be. Uh, a very uh, unjust supranational law without the ability of citizens to uh, ever say in what this law, uh, yeah. So that's another problem that we're having today. Thank you, Tiziana. Uh, Donna. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Stella, for another uh, thought-provoking discussion. The um, the, I, I love the idea that we need to move from nations being what we think of as sovereign to individuals being as what we need as sovereign. And but I've never heard heard it before about the, the individual being the unit of government. Um, it's a, just a new phrase for me. I, I've thought of individual sovereignty, but you and and so my question is like. Dave Auten referenced Joe Schwartzberg's weighted voting um, at the General Assembly and at the Security Council, actually at both of them. 
Um, but his his formula for weighted voting uh, does not treat every individual as equal um, because it, it doesn't allow more than a certain percentage of the vote to go to any one nation. So it is sort of this balance of recognizing the nations, but also recognizing the individuals. So um, I'm not sure I have a question. My question is, um, is I wonder if what you think of weighted voting, the way it is, say, in, in the several proposals that have been put forth, some by Schwartzberg and by others, too, um, where it's not quite all individuals are equal in the world. Yeah, well, um, it's a compromise. Yes, it's a compromise to get from here to there, to get you know certain countries to agree to change. Uh, so I would have been against this. I would have been against anything that it doesn't is not based on you know equal value of all individuals. And they thought that that compromise was something that was not worth having. Um, and you know, and it was then they brought to the if you cannot compromise on that, then your other option you have to just. Um, start from democracies. You have no other choice because he would not compromise on that basic principle. To him, that was a principle that cannot be touched and so on. So then, then, then you're left with which countries can you unite, uh, just democracies. And, uh, uh, but, but his idea again was, if we do that, we start at least something on the right foot. And uh, also, um, it would allow for for easier, uh, you know, easier uh, bringing countries uh, by by having, but yeah. So I think I think that that you're correct that that is a basic distinction. One other basic distinction that I see today is that by not having done anything or not having started anything at all, uh, we are ending up with having these huge problems, and that we are trying to solve, and we are trying to solve them. Uh, uh, in a way that actually is um, hauling out the state because uh, we have this, uh, for example, the this stakeholder uh, approach that is really very much against what Stride would have thought as a legitimate approach. Uh, and um, there is there are a lot of interests that are coming to place that are allowed to come into place because we have these urgent problems that we need to solve. But but that is putting us further away from ever having the system change that we're asking for because uh, you know big corporations, private stakeholders, and so on, uh, they are not bringing us closer to a system that is based on the equality of the individuals. They're not bringing us closer to uh, the idea that government is based on, uh, legitimate government is based on the agreement of the government. They're not br bringing closer to democratic participations and inclusiveness. There is a lot of talk about inclusiveness, but what is this inclusiveness? It is civil societies, which are organized around certain identities. I am not included in any of those discussions. Civil societies that are stakeholders because already they agree with what the United Nations have set up as a goal, which has been set by certain interest plus uh, states, UN bureaucracies. And uh, so the, this part, you know, this idea that there is inclusiveness is, is, is not real. It's just uh, another way that will bring us, in my opinion, further away to making the changes that are really needed. Uh, I am very skeptical that um, without any, as what I said, without any, any change of the system, we're moving away from ever being able to solve the problem of existential risks. And what is in place now is, continuing with the same system, uh, holding the state power even more so that the citizens really have no way to affect what's going on because the only way to participate for the citizens is through the state. Uh, and meanwhile, these decisions are made about us with no connection to us made by stakeholders. Why? Because they have power, because they have money, which is needed in order to solve these things. But I'm afraid that we're moving from one system that is wrong to another system that is wrong before, and, and this is happening all, 
you know, without uh, us being able to have any input. Uh, there is no way. And that's why I think also why there is more, uh, there's gonna be more uh, rise of more deliberate regimes because people on the ground feel powerless and feel that there are these dangers and that they are not part of the discussion and why should they support these decisions? Okay, thank you. Um, I don't see anyone with their hand up who hasn't asked the question before. So I'll jump in and, and ask my second one. Uh, it's very brief, but first, I, I just want to say a thing about weighted voting. Um, I've seen, I, I, I think I've seen three different proposals for weighted voting, and I don't remember which what which elements go in which. So uh, I can't label the model, but I do remember one question, one discussion I had with somebody uh, who was very much against it, and the the proposal we were talking about was one that um, that in the algorithm um, gave the rich countries more power. Um, and the person was saying, you know, that one's dead on arrival because it's just more domination uh, from the already dominant countries. Uh, so no way that's going to fly. And, you know, the person was very vehement. So uh, just one, one memory I have about it. I don't remember what, what Joe's, what the elements were of Joe's uh, proposal. But my question is, I, I just wanted to um, clarify if I heard this right. So in your chart, when, when you talked about that um, having a league, you know, and the union is not incompatible, um, I, I, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, the way I interpreted that is you mean that countries in the United Nations, so that's kind of the league, um, can, you know, form the union of democracy. So that's the smaller group. That, that's what you meant by they're not compatible. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that yeah. Uh, countries within the United Nations, have, there is nothing against them being able to form, like there is already NATO and so on, but to form a union and uh, uh, alter at least part uh, of the, you know, international organization. Um, So, and, and that, the idea would be like, again, like really trying to set things right for stride with uh, any, uh, anything that does not remove anarchy and does not remove anarchy, not through hegemony, to any form of hegemony, uh, is not gonna lead us to World Federation. If right. there is any other kind of hegemony there because of the rich countries, there is also like a, one more thing, a sense of resentment really from the global south uh, that these institutions are really, you know, protecting the interests of uh, rich countries, powerful countries, and uh, who is suffering is the south. And the south is becoming more and more important because, you know, climate change, there's gonna be migrations, there's gonna be unrest, there's gonna be all kinds of things that we will have to deal with. And uh, um, if they do not see that there is an answer in the way that, you know, the, World Organization and the UN is acting. Um, I think that there will be more and more, uh, um, you know, liberalism emerging, uh, with a lot of consequences for the rich countries. So, a certain point that the, you know, the the force of the planetary dimension of these things is going to force things that uh, we try to escape from, and uh, and the reason really, yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay, well, with that, we're, we're going into overtime, so we're gonna have to wrap up. Um, I just wanna make the, the announcement I know Gail would make, uh, but she's been having some trouble getting in um, in the hospital where she is and her phone. She's been texting me. She's having some difficulties with that. So the next meeting would be the second, um, uh, you know, second Saturday of November. However, the second Saturday of November is when we have our annual conference. So we're not gonna have that meeting in November. Instead, we'll be having the meeting in December. So we will send out an email to that effect, um, but we, you're all invited to come to the conference. And in fact, Tiziana will be one of the presenters. Uh, the conference will be on the different proposed models for World Federation. We have five speakers presenting on five different models and Tiziana will be one of them. Um, so, and the book club will resume then in two months. 
So um, with that, I just wanna check in if anybody has any other announcements of things they're promoting. And I see David's hand. Yeah, just a quick question. So what chapters will we be focused on on the December book club? You know, I don't have that in front of me. Tiziana, do you remember the, I mean, that will be in the email, but okay. do you recall what the next chapters were for the? No, I don't, I don't. Okay, we will send Gail, that out Gail in the email. Was, Gail was dividing those because she had some formula, how many pages right. and so on and so forth. Right, you will, you will, you will know in, in way in advance. Okay, okay. Um, and Donna? Yes, I just also wanted to tell everyone that on Saturday, October 29th at 12 noon, we're having a session um, on a, a, a new book by a, a, a biography of Norman Cousins. And the author of the book will be with us as well as Norman Cousins' daughter, Candace. So um, uh, it's going to be a, a really interesting discussion, I believe, about Norman Cousins, who was um, one of the presidents of our, the predecessor of our organization, the World Federalist Association. So just wanted to remind everybody. We'll send out an announcement to the book club. Great. Thank you. Any other announcements of upcoming events or things? Terrific. With that, I'll invite Tiziana if you want to stay on for a minute or two just to debrief. Thank you all very much for attending. And we'll see you hopefully at the conference next month and at the book club again in two months. So take care, have a good time until then.